Hey guys, welcome to Cold Blood Creations. We're going to do a series of videos here that will help those of you who have bought animals from us either at reptile shows or perhaps online or even if you've bought animals from another supplier, we want to help you to set those animals up to offer care and maintenance advice and tips to ensure that you have a long-lived and healthy pet. So in this video, we're going to cover the care and maintenance of the Desert King Snakes and the California King Snakes. So the question is, why do California Kings and Desert Kings make good pets? And it's quite simple. One of the first things that I think about is the absolute beauty of these animals. I mean, let's take a look at this Desert King right here. This is a completely beautiful animal. Look at the way the blacks and the yellows combine. I mean, this is a completely gorgeous animal. And not only do they come in the normal phase like this, the Desert Kings also come in an albino. And just look at how those pinks and lavenders and this is just an incredibly beautiful animal to look at. Now, the California Kings as well, completely gorgeous. You've got this black and white phase. Uh, this is a banded, gorgeous animal. Some of these guys come in stripes, black and white stripes like this one here. And this is, uh, once again, a beautiful animal. They also come in another phase called a banana phase, which you're seeing here. This got the yellow colorations and the lavenders and also they come in albinos. So one of the first things that we want to recommend California Desert Kings for a first time pet is just because of the sheer beauty of the creature. One of the other things that makes California Desert Kings a good first time pet or a good choice for even an experienced reptile keeper is the overall size of the animal. Now unlike some of the more exotic snakes like the boas and pythons, these snakes are never going to get big enough to pose a real serious risk to your children or to your other household pets. Well, unless of course you have a hamster or a gerbil for a pet, then maybe. But they're never going to get big enough to eat your cat, your dog, your neighbor's children, or anything like that. These snakes are small enough that even the youngest child in your household should have no problem holding and controlling with parental supervision, of course. That is, uh, that is a big plus when choosing a pet. They don't require a cage that's going to look like a piece of large furniture. And in fact, a 20 gallon size tank will be sufficient for either of these species on top of a chester drawer or a dresser or something like that and will provide ample space for the animal to grow. So one of the other reasons we recommend these for pets is because of their activity level. Now unlike what we call pet rocks, also known as ball pythons, who pretty much the only thing they do all day is lay coiled up in a ball, these guys actually move around. So if you're using them in a, say, a natural looking vivarium, um, you'll see the animal move. They, they like to crawl around in and out of the hot spots. Um, they hunt, they actively seek food in their cages, and they don't just lay around all day doing nothing. Now, they're not overly active so that when a young kid is holding them, they're not going to be what we call spastic like some of the other colubrids like young milk snakes. They have the perfect activity level without being flighty at an escape risk in the hands of a small child. So the other thing that, that makes these good pets is their hardiness. Now these guys do well in captivity, they eat readily, and they can tolerate a wide range of temperatures as we'll discuss a little later in the video. But they're a very good pet, they're very hardy, usually very healthy, right out of the egg, and they make a long-lived, healthy reptile pet. So before you bring your new pet king snake home, one of the things you need to take in consideration is where that snake is going to live. Now we advise getting your cage set up prior to purchasing your first king snake. Now at the very least you want to buy your supplies at the same time, but ideally you want to have a cage set up and ready to go before you bring your king snake home. Well, there's a couple things to consider. There are cages that are good and there are cages that suck. And one of the examples of a cage that absolutely sucks for reptiles is this right here. Now, most of you guys will recognize this is a 10 gallon fish tank. This was designed to hold fish. 
these tanks do a good job of, of holding fish. However, they do a horrible job of holding reptiles because most of the time what people will do, they'll put a snake in here, they'll take this type of top, which is an aquarium top, and they'll set it on top. Now, it's so easy for the snake to push this thing up off of there and get right out. So what a lot of people will do is actually put this top that was never designed to hold a snake on the cage and they'll stack a bunch of books or encyclopedias or something on top hoping to keep the snake in. That is never going to work. There has been literally hundreds and hundreds of escaped snake pets throughout the United States because of a cage like this. So one of the things I want you to consider is that cage must be escape proof and designed for reptiles. Now when it comes to cages designed for snakes, one such cage you don't really see on the market anymore, although they are available. Um, this is a plastic reptile cage and it has a sliding glass door. Now the door slides in a track on the bottom and the top. It has a litter dam here to keep any litter from falling out of the cage. And when the cage closes, there's holes in both the glass and the plastic that will allow you to stick something in there to lock the glass so the snake can't slide it open. This is an example of a cage that is designed for a snake. Now, one of the cages you're going to find most readily available at reptile shows at pet stores nowadays is going to be a cage like this. Now, this is very similar to the aquarium we showed you earlier, but the difference is the top doesn't sit down and this top has the ability to lock. Now it slides in a track just like the plastic cage I just showed you. There's actually a track on both sides and in the back so that the top slides in and out on that track. When it's all the way closed it actually locks down so that the animal can't push it out this way. You have to manually unlock it with your finger, slide it out, and because it's on this track the snake can't push up and cause the top to pop off. This is the ideal type of cage that you want to house your snake in. Remember to uh, think about preventing escapes. Go ahead and get a secure cage. Make sure it's designed for reptiles. That is the first and most important step in taking care of your new pet snake. I'm going to show you just for demonstrative purposes. Now this is a cage that we do not recommend for housing snakes. But because it's clear all the way around, I'm going to use this just to demonstrate. But because your snakes are cold-blooded or ectotherms, we want to give the snake the ability to warm and to cool itself inside of its environment. Now the way we do this is with a heat pad. Something like this little small heat pad here made by ZooMed. Now, you don't have to buy this brand. They make these in a lot of different brands. But the thing that I want to show you is proper placement of a heating pad. Now, what we're going to do is flip our cage upside down. We're going to turn the bottom up. Now, snakes like to actually warm their body up, especially when they're full of food. They have a stomach full of food they need to digest. They want to go to an area that's warm. Now, out in nature, they'll crawl up on a rock or maybe on a branch of a tree and allow the sunlight to warm them up. In captivity, we have to do that artificially, and we do it with some type of heating element. Now, some people recommend the use of an overhead heat lamp. Personally, I do not, especially if you have young children or if you have other household pets like a cat, because if they knock that lamp off and it hits the floor, then you're creating a fire hazard. Something is just as efficient and a little safer is such a heating pad like this. Now, these things are sticky on one side, and they have a power cord attached to them. But what you want to do is to place your heat pad on one end of the cage or the other. Now, the reason you want to put it on an end and not right in the center is because what you're trying to do is create a heat gradient inside the cage. You want the heat pad at one end so that it's warm on this end of the cage, but it's cool on this end of the cage, and that will allow your snake to move back and forth to the desired temperature that it wishes to be at that time. So once you get your cage home, you've got it set up, you've got your heating element in here, you're creating a heat gradient in your cage. Next thing you want to decide is what you want to put inside your cage. Now, there's several things you can choose from, and all of them have their pros and cons. 
One of the things that is readily available is uh, just regular newspaper like this. Now, a lot of times people will take a piece of newspaper, and uh, we actually use this sometimes because it's cheap, it's readily available, and you just place newspaper down on the bottom of the cage like so. Now, from a standpoint of aesthetics, it's not necessarily uh, aesthetically pleasing, and it certainly doesn't look natural, but it does everything that a bedding needs to do. Another choice, again, is paper towels. You could tear off the paper towels that you need, place it down. Now, one benefit to paper towels is that it's very absorbent. So if the snake goes to the bathroom, if it tips over the water bowl, a good layer of paper towels will absorb that up pretty quickly. It's very easy to look at the paper towels and tell if the snake has defecated on it and it's easily just taken out, disinfect the cage and clean it again. However, if you are want something that's a little more natural, there are several things you can use. One of those things is bedding. Now, I want to say right off the bat, especially for those of you who have never kept snakes before, do not, and I repeat, do not ever under any circumstance use cedar bedding. Cedar bedding is toxic to snakes and it will kill your snake really, really quickly. So never use cedar. Even though it smells good and a lot of people like it for hamsters and gerbils, once again, cedar bedding is toxic to snakes. A better choice for California and Desert Kings would be a form of aspen like this right here. Now this is a fine uh, cut aspen bedding and you just pick up a few handful of this and place it in your cage. Now aspen has a lot of benefits, one of which is it's very absorbent. You can put a line the bottom of your cage with aspen like so and you spread it out and it's it's very very absorbent. If the snake uses the bathroom, if the water bowl tips over, it will absorb all that. One of the cons against using bedding is that when you feed the snake, if you feed it in the cage, some of that bedding can get stuck on the mouse and the snake end up swallowing it. We'll cover what to do about that in the section on feeding coming up. Um, but there is a, a lot to be said for bedding. It looks more aesthetically pleasing. Now with Desert Kings and Cow Kings, you want to keep it dry. Some people recommend using cypress mulch because cypress mulch holds humidity. And while that would be a good choice for, say, a Florida king, it's not such a good choice for a desert king or a California king who wants the humidity level to be a little bit lower uh, inside the cage. We would go with a, with a uh, standard aspen bedding like this and just layer the bottom of the cage. So now your snake is going to need access to clean water. Now, one of the things we want to recommend, let our experience guide you here a little bit, make sure that whatever you use to hold water is flat on the bottom. Some water bowls are small on the bottom and big on the top. And what happens when you use that type of bowl is if the snake crawls up on it, it'll flip it over really, really easy. A bowl that is just as big on the bottom as it is on the top will allow it to sit flat and not tip over as, as easily. And then I would place that. Also, being these are desert and California kings, they don't like humidity. Remember where your heat pad is on this cage here. Remember our heat pad's over here on this side. So we don't want to put our water bowl over that. If we do, the heat from the heating pad is going to warm the water up and cause it to evaporate. That's going to cause the cage to have a lot more humidity. So in the case of desert and cow kings, we recommend putting the water bowl all the way over on the cool side of the cage. Now when it comes to water bowls, uh, another option you have is like a whipped cream or a margarine tub. Now the ones that have the snap lids that snap down on them, you can leave the lids on and cut a small hole in the top and that will uh, create something that will keep the bedding from falling into your water bowl and uh, that's certainly usable. You don't have to purchase a water bowl, you can recycle something, again a margarine tub, a whipped cream tub, Finally, we want to talk about snake security. Now, when I mention this type of security, I'm not talking about the security of a, of a good locking cage, but I'm talking about what's going to make your snake feel secure and comfortable in their environment. Snakes, by their very nature, are secretive animals, and for that reason, we do recommend something for them to hide under. Now, commercially, there's a lot of things available, like this little cave right here, and uh, like this little... Uh, 
plastic tree stump here where snakes can crawl in here and kind of hide. Now one of the benefits of using a bedding is a lot of times the snakes will utilize the bedding itself as a place to hide. They'll crawl underneath the bedding and they'll hide underneath it. Same thing if you use newspaper. If you'll use several layers of newspaper, oftentimes the snakes will crawl in between the two layers and they'll use those layers to hide themselves to feel more secure. But certainly if you want something more aesthetically pleasing than newspaper or paper towels, you can buy these commercially uh, manufactured hides like these two right here and place in your cage. Now finally, when we're talking about aesthetics, you can actually add as many things to your cage as you want to. Uh, some people like to add climbing branches like this piece of grapevine here. And certainly there's nothing wrong with placing some things like this in the cage to allow your snakes to move around to climb around. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing I will caution you about is this. The more things you place into your cage, the more things you're going to have to clean and disinfect on a weekly basis. So for that reason, you've kind of got a choice between do you want a cage that's really, really set up with a lot of vines and things? You could certainly do that, but it's going to take you a lot more time to clean and disinfect. Or do you want a cage that's very minimal, very simplistic, and very easily to clean and disinfect? The choice is entirely up to you, but this is just giving you some ideas. The most important thing is some type of ground cover, paper towel, newspaper, a water bowl, something to make the snake feel secure, and the very most important is a locking door or a secure top. Now one final tip when it comes to the security of your snake we want to mention is to block off three sides of the cage. There's a couple ways that you can do that. You can either use some kind of craft paint to paint the back, the both of the sides, or they sell a aquarium backgrounds in a lot of pet stores. You can probably even find them at reptile shows. It's just a, basically a painting of a natural scene and you just take and wrap it around three sides of your aquarium. It'll make the cage look very nice, aesthetically pleasing from a uh, point of view looking into the front. Also, it'll give the snake a little more security because they don't have this open see-through glass on all four sides. Now, one final thought on housing king snakes. As a rule, only one king snake per cage. You cannot cohabitate two king snakes together in the same cage. And we'll tell you why in this section on feeding. In the wild, king snakes feed on a wide variety of prey items, including other snakes. But in captivity, king snakes will do very, very well on a diet of commercially raised rodents. The choice you have is whether to feed live or pre-killed frozen thawed rodents. So the choice is made whether to feed live or pre-killed. Now, there's a lot of people out there that kind of shy away from feeding live, and we prefer not to. However, sometimes as reptile breeders, we produce animals that for whatever reason just absolutely do not want to start off on eating frozen thaw. For that reason, sometimes we're forced to either feed live or let an animal starve. When we're faced with that decision, of course, we're going to feed live in order to keep that animal alive and healthy. However, when we bring animals to a pet store or to a reptile expo, one of the things that we want to guarantee and ensure is that that animal has been feeding readily on frozen thawed prey. And the way we do that is with a coloring code system like the one you're going to see on this rack behind me. So one of the conveniences of feeding frozen thawed to your snake is the fact that you can buy up a large quantity of food at one time and store it away in the freezer as opposed to having to keep live mice in which you have to feed and water those mice as well. Now, if you purchase an animal from us at a, pet, at a reptile expo or pet shop or whatever, what you're going to find out is that we do not bring any animals to a reptile uh, expo unless that animal's been eating frozen thawed consistently. Now, we use a color coding method here on our juvenile cages that lets us know which animals to choose when we decide what we're going to bring to a show. For instance, if the animal has a green sticker on the cage like so, it means that that animal has consistently for a while been eating frozen thawed rodents. If it has a yellow sticker, it means that the animal has fed on frozen thawed, but not consistently enough that we feel comfortable bringing it and selling it to our customers. 
If it has a pink sticker or a blue sticker, it means that either that animal has never fed for us yet or that the animal is only eating live prey and therefore we keep these animals until we can convert them over to frozen thawed before we offer them for sale to the public. So when you first bring your snake home, chances are it's going to be a young baby snake like this California King right here. You're going to start feeding it a pinky mouse about this size right here. Now this is a frozen thawed pinky mouse and once again the convenience is that you can buy them in a bag with several of them, keep them in the freezer and thaw them out as needed. Now one thing I want to warn you about is make sure that the rodent is completely thawed out to room temperature. Um, don't put them in a microwave. If you put them in a microwave to thaw them out, you're going to end up blowing up your mouse. You're going to have little mouse particles all over the inside of your microwave. So allow yourself plenty of time, a few hours for the prey item to unthaw completely and then offer it to the snake. Now as your snake grows, you'll gradually come up to different size rodents. Um, once the snake's a little larger, you'll go up to what's called a peach fuzzy mouse, which is something about this size right here. And then of course, as the animal grows, you'll continue to go all the way up to an adult California King will appreciate a couple of frozen adult mice like this size here. Usually when they become adults, you'll feed them about two of these every two weeks or so. And um, that'll, be, uh, that'll be a good size prey item. Now, one thing you wanna watch for is obesity. If your snake looks like a stuffed sausage, then you probably need to cut back on your feeding frequency. They should have good body tone, but they shouldn't look like a sausage that has been overly stuffed. So earlier when we were talking about caging, I said one disadvantage to having bedding in a cage is that if you feed a frozen thawed rat, what it's going to do is pick up this bedding. Now, because these things will readily pick up bedding and it sticks to the prey item, as you can see here, we don't recommend laying a mouse in the cage and allowing the snake to find it. If you're going to use bedding as a substrate, what we recommend when it comes feeding time is that you take your snake out of the cage and you find something else to put it in. For instance, if you bought the snake from us at a reptile show, it will have come in a clear plastic deli cup like this. What we recommend is to place your snake in that deli cup Take the mouse that has been completely thawed out, place it in the deli cup, put the lid on here, and then place the snake back in its cage. The reason why you want to do that is so that the snake can eat without getting a mouthful of bedding and swallowing that. An adult desert king is a little bit smaller than the California kings, but as they become full grown adults, this is what you're looking at with the desert king. Now, once again, of the two subspecies, the California king and the desert, the desert is somewhat smaller, doesn't quite get as big as the California king, but nonetheless, they get big enough and they're pretty enough to be an impressive display snake as an adult. So after years of enjoying and feeding and watching your animal grow, eventually you're going to end up with a full-grown adult California king snake or desert king like this one here. Now these guys, once again, they don't get big enough to pose a threat to your children or your household pets. Although when they do become adults like this, we do recommend uh, parental supervision, especially around young children. Always think accidents, which bring us to our next point, how accidents happen. So when it comes to accidents, probably the most common accident that you're going to experience with your pet king snake is going to be the king snake biting you. Yeah, one of the easiest ways to get bit is if you smell like a king snake's food. Yeah, so what that means is if you're handling a mouse or a rat, or if you're handling another snake prior to reaching in the cage and picking up your king snake, he's going to smell something that he would normally take as food on your fingers, and you know what's going to happen then. <laughs> Chop, chop. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the other accidents that you're likely to have is if you house two king snakes together. Like we said earlier in the video, king snakes are cannibalistic and basically what that means is if you put two king snakes together in the same cage and one of them becomes hungry, eventually you're no longer going to have two king snakes. No, if you're just going to have one rather large <laughs> king snake. Well fed large king snake. So guys, we're going to be doing something new on our channel this year. We're going to be 
be answering some very frequently asked questions such as this one right here. So Dad, I have a question. If I were to buy a pet king snake, but I also wanted to turn it loose in my front yard, you know, let it take care of my rat problem, could I do that? You know, we, we believe it or not, we do get asked this question quite a bit at shows. People want to know, can they buy king snakes and plant them around their property as what we want to call guard snakes? Now, the idea is that if they put king snakes out, it's going to protect them from other snakes and especially poisonous snakes. And why the idea is, yeah, rodents, and why the idea is somewhat good, it's not very practical. Number one, if you buy a snake that's not native to your state and release it into the wild, well, that's just not good for the environment. And in fact, it's illegal to do that in most states. The second thing is this. If you, let's say you bought a hundred king snakes and released them all on your property, there's no way you're going to keep those king snakes on your property unless you had a moat around your entire yard. So the likelihood of that actually working is going to be pretty slim to nothing. Even though the idea, you're kind of thinking right, just not very practical. And they're not like dogs or cats where you can just go out and whistle and they're going to come back to their owner. So we would say if you want to keep venomous snakes off of your property, there's some there's some better ways to do it than by hiring guard snakes. So guys, we appreciate y'all watching. Hopefully this will answer all your questions about your new pet king. If we didn't cover anything that you're interested to know, you can either contact us at our website um, or through email at coldbloodcreations at yahoo.com or simply leave a comment down below. And also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. We'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks for watching. And all of them have their benefits and their um, unbenefits. <laughs> and that is to choose to feed live prey or to free, feed, uh, free, feed free, large, <laughs> well fed <laughs> king snake.